like one morning I come in and they said they'd been searching for six in the morning. The tide was just going out when it happened. When it come back down and later in the afternoon, there was a girl just laying on the bank over there, sort of 20 years old, and looked like a little angel, to be honest. You know, it's gone off for some reason. Some people go in if they don't want you to know, no one sees them. It's the middle of the night, they just slip in. No one even knows them. Hey folks, welcome back to the podcast. Last week I spent some time down in London and as any good opportunist would, I spent some time with London Fire Brigade. Specifically out down to the Thames River and was able to spend some time with the crew at Lambeth River Fire Station where they patrol the Thames as part of London Fire Brigade. But before we delve into all of that, I wanted to tell you about a new partner on the podcast, Rosenbauer. Now you'll no doubt remember Rosenbauer for their thousands and thousands of infamous helmets that you see up and down the UK Fire and Rescue Service. But I actually want to talk to you today about a pair of their boots. As I record this right now, I'm stood here in a pair of Twister Cross Protective Boots from Rosenbauer. And there's a few things about these boots that I absolutely love. So firstly is how ridiculously easy they are to put on and off. Now it might sound fairly obvious, but they've got this twist and lock system that you have at the front. You'll have seen these on a few of the boots, basically the ones where it's a really tight nylon-like cord where you depress the center button and then twist it to the side to quickly ratchet up the boot. Not only that, they've got them two flex zones on the side of the foot, so whenever I'm running around, jumping up and down towers, running up and down stairs, really, really comfortable. These have actually still got the steel toe caps as well, so you can wear them in the appliance bay. You know when you do like a 12-hour shift and you can't wait to get your boots off because they're rubbish, basically, and they're really uncomfortable? Well, I'm wearing these Rosenbauer's in and out of work. They're super comfy, they're easy to put on and off. They're made with really good materials, they're totally waterproof. So since we've been coming out of winter, we've been hitting with these storms lately in this weather. I've been wearing these out walking the dogs, out sorting the horses out. And to be honest, they just blast off the pressure washer really easy when I get back. So you're going to be hearing some more from Rosenbauer as we move on with different parts of the podcast. But I just wanted to tell you about that as well. Also, before we jump forward, if you could do me a massive favor, hit that subscribe and or follow button that you see right in front of you. Two main reasons. Number one, I'll be your best friend forever. It really helps out the podcast. And number two, it allows you to stay up to date when all the new episodes come out. So hit that subscribe, follow button right now and it'd be a massive favor to me. Lee Davis, I'm the sub-officer of the Green Watch at Lambeth River Station. So what's, what's the name of the rig? Right, so we've got two fire boats. This one that we're standing on, you can see the FF on the top of the roof there, is the Fire Flash. Oh, all right. The spare boat uh, that's just in dock, a good few miles up that way in Swan Island, is called the Fire Dart. Fire Dart? Yeah. So they're going to be replaced shortly by two boats, uh, one called uh, Tanner. Okay and one called Errington. Not sure. I remember just seeing the old pictures of Massey Shaw's um, boats coming down and uh, I figured they'd all have some sort of dissension from that but there's been a load of individuals come since him so I imagine they've, uh, they've all got their own names. So what's the capacity of these boats and why is this one coming to the end of its life? So 20 year shelf life, it's got, well, you know, like the emissions in London and stuff, the diesel, it runs on red diesel and stuff. So it? like that's all. It was supposed to be end of its life cycle was normally about like 2015, it should have been done. Yeah. So it's well over that now. Like it's about seven years out of date, both boats. When we What's got wrong them. with it? Uh, it sounds it, harsh, but it, obviously it, it, it's still, it's, it's still it, operational. It looks yeah, a little bit tired, but. It is tired, but like when you see like the new boat, what, like how far we've come yeah. in 20 years. Like we've got like fish finder, sonar on it. <clears throat> we've, got, we've got nothing digital on that boat there right. uh, but th- this thing's got swipe screens and uh, there's no steering wheel in the new boat it's just <laughs> joystick only so it just you just lean it to what way you want to go uh, the beam wicked. is a lot it's an increase on this so the beam i should say is, is what is the beam? Not, the beam is the width of the boat okay so it's got much wider beam and about another meter and a half why do you want a wider beam there's more stability in the water is just it just whoever's designed it it wasn't designed by us it's like similar to, to this it has a gate on the front it's, it's it's a bigger boat the boat will run from the end of this pontoon here right up to the middle of where we were standing if you get two boats here it will take up all the pontoon the size cool. of the so this fire station actually sits on the water. This yep. fully functioning fire, stupid as it sounds. Yeah. You've got, yeah. We've got bedding it, it, in here. It, it, this is actually the fire station. It's, the a, float, don't... it's a floating pontoon. It's, floating it's pontoon, two yeah. stories. It's got watertight doors like you have in a submarine or on a ship. So anything below deck, which is below deck is, this is the, so where you see these portholes here, Yeah. That that's the classroom. So obviously okay. below that. So if there was a breach from the pontoon, water would come bush, gushing in so that's why we have like watertight doors so, so it has got down. you know for it's all the guys a, and girls working here it's got lecture it's got gym kitchens everything it's a, a proper gym, station got a kitchen. yeah it's a proper working station yeah it's the only floating Wicked. fire station and uh <laughs> and it gets rocked about as well yeah. uh, we've got a seven meter tide so i was gonna the, say it looks so, low so the it? little guy up there in, a, in about what we're doing now so the tide's still moving outwards okay. so we've got a little we're gonna go down a little bit further 
but like in about six hours, we'll be we'll be level. We'll be level with a window. Jesus, so, really? Yeah. So we've wow. got like a seven okay. meter tide. And, uh, and that's twice, I did think, you know, when I'm looking so, at some so of these restaurants and stuff they're sitting on here, these will be sitting in the water yeah, it's, it's, eight hours later. Yeah, well, people who don't know, that's what they that's say. It, mate. They you say, don't know, Thames is tidal, well, isn't it? The, the, the Thames, oh, it's low today, but it's it's low and high every day. It goes up Jesus. twice a day. So for people, obviously, we, we can see what we're looking at, but that is a good, what, four or five metre rise? Yeah, and we're not, we're not at low tide yet because this pimple here, see where we're coming out? Yeah. So in an hour or so, it will be out to here. So like this, this is called like a, when you look on a chart map and you see the green, that's like a drying height. So yeah. like it shows drying heights on the side what what are exposed. Yeah. So, so just getting our head around the water rescue and the water leveling capacities. So we've got six levels of water rescue. Is that right? Am I right in saying that? Yeah. So we, we've got our wading, then we've got our swift water rescues three, and then four and five are our power boats. Yeah. So you got your boys or everything, I imagine. No. All right. We, we, we don't. That's all FIU stuff. Ah, okay. We, we're uh, just marine. You just marine. <laughs> but just marine. It's it's a different. It's Shows a different, my lack of knowledge a, on that it's one. It's a different ball game in here. <laughs> all right. Uh, we don't walk to work to them different levels. We have like the way go throw. We do swift water. Yeah, basically, yeah. we do the same level as the FIUs do. But we obviously we have the mud capacity as well that we do. Like we was, we was doing that last week. We was training with that. Yeah. Most of our number one calls are for people jumping on uh, off bridges, suicides. Okay. That's our that's yeah. our main uh, bread and butter. So um, are you guys all dry suited up yeah, for a quick response, suited. jump in and grab them, or is it predominantly trying to hook them out of the water? Or? Do you know what? If we had someone uh, five o'clock in the morning a few nights back, yeah, and I think they jumped off Foxhall Bridge. Okay. If you don't see them within, I don't know, five minutes, and a lot of time they're not there anymore anyway, because okay. when they go in, they go under. Depending on the speed of the tide, got a five knot tide, like they roll around like in a washing. Oh, they machine. get pulled straight under the rip curl well, and just yeah, just and tumble do, dry them. Yeah, and they can be out to like. Tower Bridge within half hours, you know. Like so, if we got camera spotters and stuff on the bridges for us to be able to see and Coast use Guard, thermal Coast imaging Gu capacities, or yeah, Coast Guard, we had the helicopter up as well. Okay. Uh, the nice thing for me as a sub officer is that I get to speak. Like normally on a fire engine, you go through your control. You want to speak to the police. You want to speak to you know apart from manually, but I yeah. speak to the Marine Police. I speak to the Coast Guard. I speak to VTS, which is the River Traffic Service along the river. I can speak directly to the helicopter. It's about I'll show you the radios and it's about four different radios and and when it gets going, it gets going in there. Yeah, you know, it's a like busy old waterway. We forget the fire brigade is only a small part of yeah. everything that's going on down Where there. Where you say, like, with cameras and stuff, but I use the landside crews. So yeah. if I've got a confirmed person in, you have to remember that an incident on the river doesn't stay still like it does on yeah. the landside. So, like, when you start plotting there, you're going to start, like, planning this incident. You're going to start looking at the tide, the speed of the tide, depths of the tide where you're going to plot, how far back you're going to go, you've got to get the speed of the tide will be, so how far that. We've got something we throw in with a light on in the night as well, so the minute we know they've gone in, we throw that in so we can gauge how far that's gone down the river or upstream. Uh, okay. you know, we, so you can plot that immediately, the speed yeah, can, of the we, pool, we can, so we can, we can, you can judge where they're going to be when you can, get to them-ish. The span of the search is going yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Going to so be. So how many stations are based on, on the Thames? How one. many? Just the one, it is literally just you guys it's to cover us. the whole thing. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Jesus. <laughs> it's the, it's, it's so we have got side. some firefighting capabilities on the boat as well. Yeah, we'll so we have like got. your deliveries there. Yeah. Uh, we carry quite a lot of water on here. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> I was going to say, do you, do, you, do you actually carry anything as in the bow just to give the boat stability or is it all of it is just no, uh, pumping through. capacity? It just pumps uh, through. On the monitor, pumps through on that. I think it's about 1,800 litres a minute. On our new one, it's like massive. It's something like 10,000. It's got like about four uh, electronic uh, monitors on it. Yeah. problem with it, with it, when you use the monitor though as well, is you get jet reaction from it. So like where you're firing up there, the old messy shore, if you look on old photos and it was fighting a factory fire, you'll see on the other side, it had two two monitors pushing into, into the, the ground. water to keep it steady. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, that's yeah. How, I suppose that, if that you're works, pumping yeah. out, like you say, you're pumping out and you're throwing 1800. Yeah. You'd be slowly getting you over the side of the bloody river. <laughs> yeah, and mud mats are there on that. Two five metres, one two metre. Uh, very heavy, a move. Look, look really light once you lift them, but once you're on the mud. The, the, the IRP is the inflatable rescue pass. The boot. Yeah. Yeah, booms around the edge of them, sort of thing. Yeah. 
nice. they're there, but once they're on the mud, like a lot of guys who do. Do you have the lances to go into the mud to free yeah, people out as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we use that. Yeah, we was only using them two weeks ago. Like we do a uh, six monthly. We I just take all the lads out. I, I, I put it all on myself, and we all get in the mud. And, nice. I, and, and <laughs> especially people, a lot of FRUs have done mud rescue training, but they've never been on the mud. No. And, so and, I've done and, literally some familiarisation with the lances and trying yeah, to free and, people and you, up. You wait, and when you get on the mud and yeah. you can't you can't lift but, anything yeah. even the small <laughs> all of a sudden you're trying to lift it but the suction is is quite good all right so let's have a look down here just doing uh just so these fellas are constantly nursing it trying to keep yeah. it going <laughs> so we come into um into the bridge as we call it, it. <laughs> so like air suspension so air crew? suspension so six, seats six all the seats the because of the yeah as you see the suspension of the, all the seats because yeah. like when you, you what speed does it travel at well it should do 32 knots it used to do 32 knots but then so you'll be getting some kick off the water so with you, if you again with when you're with the tide you can add five knots of tide to that so but then going the other way it's minus because you've got to take the tide off there's a speed over water and speed over ground are different so like what happens is the fire brigade bit of this starts diminishing when yeah, you're on yeah there a lot it's literally you, you start and that's what when <laughs> senior officers come on and they're asking you fit and and like we we uh, living in different it. worlds almost yes, it's a marine world and and the fire brigade kind oh, of strange thing. trying to fit it to the marine world so like we have to sort of so that there's my radios there so i've got this one that's my control that's one i talk to the land crews this one i talk to the coast guard that one i talk to vts on there this one i can talk to the crews outside Mm. So like on a good day, that's my little world there. Jesus. And, and when everyone's talking to you, you know, like, and you have to prioritise it. If with when, the greatest of respect, you kind of just you're not ignoring anybody, but you just need to crack on and get it done because otherwise so, you can mess about trying to communicate with everybody and, and miss the one, whole point of what you're doing. My number one person on there is the Coast Guard. Yeah. So like this is my control, but quite often if they're both speaking at the same time, I'll say to my control, stand by me as in the Coast Guard. Who's got the main jurisdiction on this water? It's the Coast Guard. It's Coast Guard all day. So yeah. yeah so, Police don't. No, it's uh, it's the Coast Guard's river. The, the the traffic system belongs to the PLA, the Port of London Authority. So yeah. that which is. Do they get awfully upset if you one? just start self-deploying on drills? Do you no. have to schedule all your stuff? Or no. you, happy, you can just no. go out whenever you want. The, the, the lovely thing about my job is I have, I have total autonomy to what okay. I want to do, when I want to do it. Yeah. And uh, so, like, not <laughs> see... Uh, I mean, uh, we still get, like, program training and stuff. It's a little bit different, but I can usually, you know, if I say, like, right, tomorrow, boys and girls, we're going to go out and do mud. It's up to me what yeah. I want to do. So I make sure, like... And, and what I kind of do is where I think the shortfalls are or if someone's quite new and, I, and I'll say, like, you've been on mud and they're like, I've never... So, well, we're, we're going to go on the Assumptions mud. are the uh, mother of all mess-ups, yeah, as because, they say. Yeah, because on here, it's very, very high profile. Yeah. So anything on that river in yeah. front of Parliament, yeah. as you can imagine, Imagine yeah, everybody yeah. feels everyone's right. on the camera straight Everyone's away. The you need to be yeah. slick, yeah. really so slick. It, it, it shows. Not getting out there, dropping stuff off the sides, <laughs> fumbling around. Yeah, it, it, you will be exposed straight away. And I'm very that aware must be quite nerve wracking for people because when I said to you, like, have you got to have a certain number of years in FRS or whatever well, before I, you come I, on and do this? Because it's I, pretty I rode intense. in charge for 20 years, and, and I've had my moments where like <laughs> I've seen some things and uh. <laughs> But I've tended to take a lot of my experience from people I thought were calm and, and like I've, I've took a lot of that from ask the guys, you never see me shout, scream and whatever. Yeah. But I'm very conscious of people making a mess of things. And mm. like, so I always say, like, you know, like if you're not sure of that, let's, let's go out and play with it. We'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Any new bit of equipment we have, we like within, a, within a few days, back. we're out. We're out at night throwing that out because everyone a few nights yeah. ago. Don't let your egos get in the way. If no, you're no, not let's, sure, let's, let's just have out. a play. Yeah. Because just simple things like, like, oh, we've got this new bit of equipment. You turn the light on here, but when, when the night comes, you're like, oh, I, 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 yeah. like, I don't want to have to yeah. explain yeah. that. You can't unclip it. You can't get it out of his holder. You can't get it out of the bag. You drop it somewhere. Yeah, yeah, all those little bits. Because like you say, when someone goes off a bridge or someone goes in the water, you've got minutes before they are in a yeah, completely no, no, different location. Usually, it's very interesting, like when you learn about different people, different ages, different races float differently. Oh, really? Yes. Like we had... Uh, I know I'm dense as hell. I sink. Well... <laughs> Usually, like we 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 had a, a really nice lady come down and uh, filmed, uh, sorry, not filmed, um, done a presentation on. She was a she was a police diver. Yeah. And she she once gone to a, a drowning two guys in a boat, and they'd fallen. 
that they'd gone in a lake and, and what she couldn't understand when they got there, they found one body underneath where the river was. It was a long way up the Thames mm. and there's very little tide, but they found another body two miles away. They both went off this deck when they come out of the pub, they got in this little boat. They both went in the, the drink place, at the same yeah. time. And she, she said like that made her set her on a journey of studying yeah. why this happens and stuff. And she she showed us a, a, a chart. So it was said, like a, a graph of like yeah, rough of, traveling every speeds, time, even when weight. we've got yeah, every, any time we've got a, a body, we can get onto her and say like, we lens. found this body yeah. uh, here. Uh, their age was that they was wearing this. So trainers. she could build that whole database. Well, one of the things was that they've never found anyone under the age of fifteen who didn't sink to the bottom. No one's ever been found on the top of the water who's wow. under the age of fifteen. So the minute they go in, drown, they're down. Why? They, 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 well, that far they've never that? on the opposite side of that. No one under the age of 65 has been found on the bottom, 100% floating. So anyone old in the water is. Uh, oh, so what's that? Is that the porousness of the skin? Is well, there's the lots and lots of, of different the bone factors. density. And another thing, kids she, and out, you get hard bones in the middle. I'm just, I'm, I'm out there. I'm wandering in the water now. Because you, you start to get obviously brittle bones and less calcium as you get know, older. But that's a hundred percent anyone under fifteen. God, it's not that, been found. The survivability when they're younger is a lot higher as well, though, isn't it? You get yeah, that. Um, yeah. So we always search, mammalian drowning instinct. We where always you, search for ninety minutes anyway. Like, so ninety when, minutes. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll give them at least ninety minutes. We'll, we'll be up and down the river, whatever the weather, whatever time of day it is. So yeah, she done this study. And after that, without seeming morbid, is it? Do the crews here dive? Do no, they have dive? You can't, you can't dive. You can't dive in this. We can't dive in this. You can't dive in just because visibility is nothing, or oh, is it just the tide. Oh, okay, like, just and, and, and the debris away. underneath it, and there's like it's it, just too know, dangerous. The, you know, like some of the there's uh, like they call them sort of cow sheds, bits that stick out underneath that they're exposed when the Thames goes down. Oh, there's yeah, lots yeah. of. Lots of old bits of bridges yeah, and stuff. Lots when the of tide strainers goes down, and stuff that's going to catch yeah, your legs or you, lines. You can't put or, a diver or, uh, in here uh, no. unless there's like a still tide. It's like so. If it's after ninety minutes, is it just knock well, off, make, knock but, off, make up? Usually, so if they're under a certain age, you probably know they'll be around after about five days. They'll come back up unless they're stuck under a barge, uh, which happens quite often. So the one we had five o'clock, I think it was on our, I think it was Wednesday morning. The red watch two days later found them when the tide went down they were exposed just on the bank over there like the tide. so when you say find them you guys go out and just do tours to check the banks for no no someone of course just we'll, member of public calls it in and says yeah someone to call it in we, we do we, we patrol every day we go out and yeah. also the uh, metropolitan police have uh, like marine police two is usually this side of whopping and marine police yeah. three is the other side of whopping yeah so they go they go uh up and down and, and sometimes like we had a girl uh, one morning i come in and they said they've been searching for six in the morning the white watch i took over at half nine the tide was just going out when it happened yeah then it come in and then when it was when it come back down in, later in the afternoon, she uh, there was a girl just laying on the bank over there, sort of 20 years old, Jesus. Like, you know, and looked like a little angel to be honest. You know, it's gone off for some reason. Some people go in if they don't want you to know, no one sees them. Just it's, it's the middle of the night; they just slip in. No one even knows they're in. So other people are seen getting in. Cheers, brother. Really appreciate that, mate. Sorry.